You're watching Beyond 100 Days. Donald Trump's place in history is about to change. In all likelihood, he will be the president who was impeached, and only the third time it's ever happened. Proceedings began in the House of Representatives five hours ago. The actual vote will take place later today. Democrats are approaching this day in a somber mood. They say the charges are serious, putting personal gain above American interests. If we do not act now, we would be derelict in our duty. It is tragic that the president's reckless actions make impeachment necessary. He gave us no choice. The founders were very concerned about a partisan impeachment in which politics of the majority who have their strength can do what they want to do irregardless of any facts. We are told Donald Trump is busy at his desk, but he is, of course, tweeting. Tweeting in caps. This is the scene live in the House of Representatives. The debate is ongoing. We will be dipping into it throughout the programme. Joining us now is former advisor to George W. Bush, Ron Christie, and president of the Constitutional Accountability Centre, Elizabeth Wydred. Ron, uh, thanks for joining us from San Francisco. I imagine you're quite glad to be out of Washington and out of politics uh, at the moment. It is only the third time that an American president faces impeachment. What are you thinking today? Well, good afternoon to you, Caddy. What I'm thinking is that this is a very sad day in America. I was on Capitol Hill 21 years ago when we had the last impeachment of the pre President of the United States, and it was a lot more civil in the tone as well as the discourse of that impeachment. Here, this is a tale of two cities. You have Republicans saying that the President has done nothing wrong, and you have the Democrats saying that they're upholding the Constitution and that no person is above the law. My specific thoughts, I think the record here is very weak. I think there is no specific evidence of a quid pro quo. And the notion of having an, an obstruction of Congress uh, article of impeachment is laughable, given that, of course, Congress didn't exercise all of their constitutional duty to compel and receive evidence. So I, I end as I started. I think it's a sad day for us in America. Elizabeth, a sad day in America or something that just had to happen? Well, I think it's both. It's certainly a somber day. Constitution, the Constitution puts impeachment in as a remedy, as the ultimate remedy, when an elected official, up to and including the president, has abused his office so uh, severely, as we've seen with this president. You know, I think that they also, the Democrats in the House also had no choice. Um, I think that the record here with this particular incident that led to these two articles of impeachment um, is so such an abuse of President Trump's office and such a violation of constitutional principles of fair and free democracy, the idea that no one is above the law, and the idea that when the president acts on the world stage, he acts in the best interest of the American people and for our national security and not for his own personal benefit, whether it be political in this particular case or financial, as we've seen in other cases. And while there are only two articles of impeachment, I think they are stand-ins in some ways for the vast corruption that we've seen from this administration. And they get to really crucial points that I think are going to be upheld in this impeachment vote, which is that we need to be able to have confidence in our democracy, that it is not being corrupted by foreign influence, and we need to have confidence in the checks and balances written into our Constitution and the idea that the law applies to everyone, including the president. But Elizabeth, if you're removing someone who's been elected to the highest office in the land, the bar is set extremely high. Did these articles of impeachment, in your view, satisfy that test when you haven't heard from the people who are closest to the president? So I think that the facts are pretty clear, to be honest, and we've heard from the president's own mouth. You know, this wasn't a transcript precisely. It was a readout of the call, and I think it's important to remember that. But even the readout that we got from the president was terribly damning. The idea that he needs a favor from the Ukrainian government to investigate his political rival before releasing congressionally allocated military aid for the Ukraine and pushing back against Russian aggression. That is a really big deal. It is an impeachable offense on the level that gets to the core of what the founders were concerned about when they put impeachment in the Constitution. And I would just add on that point about, you know, he was a duly elected president. 
the founders put impeachment as a remedy into the Constitution, knowing that someone might get into the office and then corruptly try to hold on to that office. And that's why the ballot box mm. might not be a sufficient check. Elizabeth, is there anything that could happen tonight as we get to this vote within the next few hours that would surprise you? You know, I'm not sure about surprising. I think that, you know, we've spent so many years of the Trump administration seeing corrupt act after corrupt act. And, you know, you could go on and on about what are the potential, potential impeachable offenses from this president. You know, I think uh, his acceptance of foreign money while he's president in, in direct violation of the Constitution is one of those. But, you know, I spend a lot of time as a constitutional lawyer thinking about what the founders thought when they drafted our Constitution. And they were deeply concerned with not just corruption, but foreign corruption. And the idea that the president would, as all of the testimony showed, Ambassador Sondland made clear there was a quid pro quo. This wasn't about a general interest in stopping corruption. Um, I think that's a nice spin on it, but that's just not what President Trump was doing. The idea was that he wanted an announcement. He didn't even really care about the investigation of Hunter Biden. He wanted an announcement that would hurt a political rival. And the founder's worst nightmare was a president who would get into office and instead of having unclouded judgment and undivided loyalty to the American people, use the privilege of serving in an office of trust under the United States for his own personal, political, financial gain. And that's what we have here. That's what the facts show. And, you know, it's just as a constitutionalist, I frankly am glad that there are people standing up for that in the House. I don't know if it's the smartest political decision or not. Frankly, as a constitutionalist, I don't care. I'm just glad that our Constitution is being vindicated. And I guess what I hope is that the same thing happens in the Senate. You know, we've seen what Mitch McConnell has said. Um, we might think sort of the cynical Washington insiders among us might think, you know, it's a fait accompli. But I think that it's not wrong for the American people to expect better from their elected leaders, even if they still think they might not get it. Ron Christie, Elizabeth Widra, thank you very much um, for joining us both. Of course, we're going to carry on looking at what's going on on Capitol Hill.